Most drones either hover or fly forward. These do both. This is a VTOL hybrid drone, a vertical takeoff and landing, fixed wing cruiser with enough smarts to fly itself across a hundred miles of terrain. Out in the field, they're being used for everything from battlefield surveillance to rural blood delivery. And the technology behind them is where imagination meets physics. Because building one of these isn't just about putting wings on a drone. It's aerospace level engineering, ultralight materials, multi-mode propulsion systems, and of course, a lot of code. Today, we're going inside the factory to see exactly how fixed-wing VTOL drones are made. Most commercial and consumer drones today are quadcopters. They have four rotors mounted in a cross layout, each adjusting speed hundreds of times per second to maintain balance and control. These machines excel at low-altitude maneuvering, hovering in place, making sharp turns, and flying in confined spaces. They're agile, responsive, and relatively easy to pilot. But quadcopters rely entirely on rotor thrust to stay in the air. That means they're constantly fighting gravity with no aerodynamic assistance. As a result, they burn through batteries quickly. Your average quadcopter has a flight time of 20 to 30 minutes, tops. Push it hard or strap on a heavy payload, and that window shrinks. Now, looking at fixed wing drones. These aircraft generate lift using their wings, just like airplanes. As they move forward, air flows over the wing's curved surface, creating lower pressure above and higher pressure below. That pressure difference is what keeps them aloft. They don't need to push against gravity with rotors the whole time. They use physics to glide. Because of that, fixed wings are significantly more energy efficient. They can fly longer distances, stay in the air for multiple hours, and carry larger payloads on less power. They're also faster, often cruising at 50 to 80 miles per hour, depending on the design. Fixed wing drones need space to operate. Most require a runway or a launcher to take off in a decent sized area to land. That's fine on a military base or open field, but useless in urban environments, dense forests, or mountainous terrain. It limits where they can be deployed. And that's where VTOL hybrids come in. VTOL stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing. A VTOL fixed wing drone combines two flight modes into one platform. Vertical lift using rotors for takeoff, hover, and landing, and forward flight, using wings and a propulsion motor to fly like a traditional aircraft. These hybrid drones can lift off from a parking lot or a rooftop. Then, once airborne, they transition to fixed wing mode and fly for hours across dozens of miles. They are amazing, but also very technically demanding and that's why it's said that VTOL fixed-wing drones aren't just the next evolution of UAVs, but a convergence of everything we've learned from aviation, robotics, and embedded systems over the past two decades. And to understand how it all works, we have to start at the beginning. The airframe of a VTOL fixed-wing drone is its skeleton, its shape, its structure and its first line of defense against wind, gravity, and physics itself. And when designing for flight, nothing matters more than the strength-to-weight ratio. Every extra gram means more energy required to lift, so the materials and methods here are more about optimization and, of course, durability. Most high-performance VTOL drones start with carbon fiber composites. These materials are made by weaving strands of carbon into fiber, then impregnating it with epoxy resin. Once cured, they get a structure that's strong, light, and stiff enough to withstand aerodynamic loads at high speed. For internal volume, like the fuselage, manufacturers often use a foam core sandwich structure. Large sheets of composite are CNC cut into precisely shaped fuselage panels, wing spars, and internal bulkheads. These pieces are often laid into molds that ensure perfect curvature and alignment. Now, this isn't just an outer shell. Inside the airframe, there's an entire internal architecture supporting the drone's propulsion system, avionics, and payload bay. You'll find reinforced hardpoints for mounting VTOL lift motors, usually embedded carbon tubes or aluminum inserts. 
These have to absorb sudden torque loads without flexing. There are also payload rails, usually modular, where batteries, sensors, or mission-specific gear get mounted. These are designed to be both vibration-isolated and center-balanced to avoid skewing the drone's pitch or yaw. Wings are usually constructed separately, using molded airfoils with embedded spars. These wings are bonded to the fuselage with accurate fittings and often contain servo wiring channels, antennas, or even auxiliary batteries. All of it, from the tip of the nose to the trailing edge of the wing, is shaped with one goal – to minimize drag, maximize efficiency, and stay in the air as long as possible on as little power as possible. For reference, most quadcopters manage 20 to 30 minutes of airtime on a full battery, but a well-designed VTOL fixed wing is about four hours. That's what a well-built frame unlocks. But structure alone doesn't get a drone off the ground. The propulsion system of a fixed-wing VTOL drone is where the real deal is. Because what this drone does is more than just flying. In forward flight, it behaves like a conventional aircraft. A rear-mounted pusher propeller driven by a high-efficiency electric motor generates thrust. This prop works just like a prop on a Cessna, pulling or in this case pushing the airframe forward while the wings generate lift. But when it comes to takeoff and landing, wings alone won't cut it. Four or more quad-style rotors, usually mounted on booms or embedded in the wings, kick in to lift the aircraft straight into the air. Unlike quadcopters, though, these rotors don't fly the entire mission. Their job is to get the drone off the ground, stabilize it in a hover, and hand control to the forward propulsion system. However, that handoff is the tricky part as Central Flight Controller has to manage all of this in real time. It takes constant input from gyros, accelerometers, GPS, and barometers, then decides when to begin the transition sequence. Here's what that transition looks like. The VTOL rotors spin up and lift the drone vertically. Once airborne, the aircraft tilts forward and the pusher motor engages. Gradually, lift transitions from rotors to wings. When the wings generate sufficient lift, the flight controller throttles down the VTOL motors, often turning them off completely in cruise. At the core of the VTOL fixed-wing drone is the IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit. It's a compact device packed with gyroscopes and accelerometers, constantly measuring roll, pitch, yaw, and movement in all axes. This tells the drone how it's oriented, whether it's climbing, diving, banking, or hovering in place. Alongside that is the GPS module, which gives the drone global position data, latitude, longitude, and altitude refreshed multiple times per second. But GPS alone isn't enough. It has a barometer that senses changes in air pressure to refine altitude readings, especially useful in VTOL mode. Paired with a magnetometer, essentially a digital compass, the system gets accurate heading information. And together, these sensors feed into a dual-mode autopilot. Now, most of these drones are flown autonomously, meaning that the operator supervises the mission while the drone follows a set of pre-programmed waypoints. These waypoints include specific lat-long coordinates, target altitudes, flight speeds, hold times, and even camera angles. The drone follows this path precisely, with onboard software calculating optimal flight curves between each leg. However, Autonomy doesn't mean isolation. The drone is constantly in communication with its ground control system through a radio telemetry link, sometimes using encrypted 900 megahertz or 2.4 gigahertz frequencies, sometimes with long-range LORA modules or satellite relays for beyond line-of-sight missions. If conditions change, say a storm rolls in or an airspace restriction pops up, the operator can take manual override, switch to a loiter pattern, or initiate a return to home sequence. And if everything fails, the drone can be programmed to enter failsafe mode, slow to a hover, hold position, or return to launch using dead reckoning and altitude memory. In the end, the whole thing works like an intelligent co-pilot. It knows its mission, it knows its limits, and it knows what to do when things go wrong. 
After the components are prepared, the manufacturers make sure everything works together and works perfectly. First, they assemble the parts, starting by installing the wings, which are mounted to the airframe using custom brackets and high-torque bolts. These wings may primarily be for lift, but they also house the propulsion motors for forward flight and their positioning has to be exact to maintain optimal aerodynamics and balance. Next is the motor installation. Each motor is carefully placed in the correct position, whether it's the rear-mounted pusher motor for forward flight or the VTOL rotors mounted along the wings or fuselage. Then comes servo calibration. Every drone has several control surfaces, the ailerons for roll, the elevator for pitch, and the rudder for yaw. Each one is connected to servos that must be adjusted to within the finest degrees. Once everything's bolted in, connected, and calibrated, they move on to tuning, where the drone's flight controller is configured and its response rates are dialed in. The settings must ensure the drone is not overly sensitive, which would cause oscillation or erratic behavior, nor too sluggish, which would affect its ability to make quick adjustments in flight. Before a VTOL fixed wing drone is considered ready, it goes through a series of tests, where the engineers simulate gusts or critical failures to see how the drone handles stress and emergencies. Let's start with a real story. In Rwanda, a child needs a blood transfusion. The nearest hospital is 60 miles away, across rough mountain roads. 20 minutes later, a drone lands carrying a blood unit, bypassing terrain, traffic, and time. That's the impact of VTOL drones. Military ISR is one of the most critical uses. These drones can hover in place, collect thermal imaging, and cruise silently over hostile terrain for hours, all without relying on a runway. From forest cover to urban rooftops, they bring high-altitude surveillance straight to the battlefield. In disaster relief and fire mapping, VTOL drones fly over wildfire zones, scan the ground with thermal cameras to chart fire lines, or help search and rescue crews locate missing persons in dangerous terrain. They're fast, efficient, and unaffected by blocked roads or unstable ground. Industrial patrols are another major frontier. Power lines, border stretches, and oil pipelines are being monitored from the sky in real time. These drones fly long-range missions, detect faults or leaks, and send back high-res data without the delays of manned inspection crews. But it's medical delivery where the human impact hits hardest. In regions with poor infrastructure or emergency situations, VTOL drones are flying blood units, vaccines, and critical meds directly to clinics, bypassing traffic, bad roads, or even floods. And thanks to their advanced landing and recovery systems, equipped with sonar or LIDAR, these drones can settle down safely even in tight, unpredictable environments. VTOL drones are active, essential tools already reshaping how we respond, deliver, and protect. So, what are your thoughts on these drones? Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Industrial Craft, and we'll see you in the next one.